Deputy First Minister, honoured guests and delegates, I am delighted to welcome you to our Edinburgh campus for this significant day in the development of a digital Scotland. This is a vitally important topic for Scotland, one in which Scotland can demonstrate world leadership by capitalising on very rapidly advancing technology. You are actually visiting today one of our five campuses, the others being in Galashiel, Stromness, Dubai and Malaysia with over 28,000 students studying Harriet Watt degrees around the world. So with 28,000 exams run in 400 locations around the world, I look forward to an expansion of Digital Scotland to digital world in future to help our very demanding international communications. Scotland can boast a long track record in developing digital technologies. Indeed, the Soliton, a pulsed waveform used in optical fiber communications, because it propagates long distances without dissipation, was first observed by John Scott Russell in 1834 as a water wave on the Union Canal, only about a mile from here, just behind the principal's house. It occurred when a horse-drawn barge suddenly stopped on the viaduct, and Russell jumped on a horse and chased the soliton wave for several miles along the canal. I find it very appealing to know that re-establishing the canal for recreation use is now part financed by optical fibres laid along the canal, carrying digital phone and data traffic between Edinburgh and Glasgow. Those optical soliton waves now travel at the speed of light, so a horse would be rather inadequate to, to chase these kind of solitons. At Herit Watt, Lasers and fibre optics have been research strengths for over 40 years. With world leading research into digital communications, digital optical processing and even digital optical computing dating back to the 1970s. Nowadays we research quantum communications which offers the ultimate security for transmitted data, while our most recent spin out Optoscribe supplies components to the telecoms industry. But the university has a much wider variety of digital research. For instance, a consortium is conducting research into the digital economy, including how business should be responding to the rapid changes in new and mobile technology. Our summit project is developing motivational, location-aware apps for mobile devices that will encourage the walking and hiking community to avail themselves of local businesses and tourist attractions in rural, rural areas. Spacebook, a project from our Interaction Lab, is a speech-driven, hands-free, eyes-free device for pedestrian navigation and exploration. Another project has changed the way that products are presented in around 1 billion IKEA catalogues uh, for the past four or five years. And to show that art and sciences can mix, the Digital Story Lab at Herrick Watt is investigating various aspects of narrative expression with a view towards developing novel and innovative education tools for future generations. There's also research into uh, technology for interactive drama, role playing and storytelling. One of the results of the research was Sarah, the poetry reading robot who performed at last year's Edinburgh Fringe. One of our highest international profile projects is a Science Bridges uh, initiative between the UK and China in 4G wireless mobile communications. This Herit Watt, Watt led, RCUK funded, more than a million pound project, involves collaboration between top UK and Chinese universities and companies. At the other end of the scale, we have collaborated with a local community just down the road in Wester Hills where with other institutions, we help to produce a digital totem pole which allows residents and visitors to learn more about the social history of the area. So the future helping the, to access the past. So other universities will have a similar list of activities. At Territ Watt, our mission is to create and exchange knowledge for the benefit of society. Our subject portfolio spans the fundamental to the applied while encouraging innovation and entrepreneurship. Many will know that we have run the path for the past four years Converse Challenge, which is the largest business competition and entrepreneurial training programme in Scotland, open to all staff and students in Scotland's universities and research institutes. 
We reassured that our government policies are firmly grounded in this ethos as well. So, today you will hear many diverse perspectives on the challenges ahead for a di digital society. From the challenge of cities to those of our remote rural areas, from the development of advanced mobile coverage to the future capacity of fixed networks, from the almost unbelievable expectations of the internet to the challenges of public services delivery to meet those most uh, in need. These are not just technolo technological challenges, but the digital revolution constitute major changes and opportunities for our way of life, business operations, improvement in services, and something for society as a whole to grasp. There are a few areas of work and life that are not enriched by our newfound capabilities.